Okay, good evening to all of you who are viewing me tonight and perhaps sometimes in the future. I'm Greg Stanton, also known as Asar. I'm the spiritual leader of Oasis Everywhere, which is a virtual spiritual community. And we have a number of things, offerings. And if you want to know more about Oasis Everywhere, feel free um, for to um, go to oasiseverywhere.com. If you see there, there's oasis dash everywhere.com and then you can um, find out more about what we're doing out here virtually um so we are going to step into this evening's conversation it's been quite an interesting day uh, you may have had an interesting day today is a super full moon uh full moons already have their impact on people and it's supersized this evening or it appears to be supersized inside of that is also a partial lunar eclipse. And so I want to welcome all of you to Transformation Tuesday. Some people might ask, why do I give even space to what's going on in the heavens? Well, one of my favorite scriptures is found in the book of Psalms, verse 1 through 4, and that is chapter 19, verses 1 through 4. And it says, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. And it's interesting because most people give no credence to the constellations, give no credence to anything that's up in the sky. When we look at this particular patch, this passage, it poetically speaks to the heavens, stars, planets, etc. as a way that divine knowledge is revealed, which some believe hints at the zodiac or astrological meanings, which is true. Um, so we'll go into that in some future date. We'll talk about the, what I like to call astro theology. So this evening, Transformation Tuesday, Psalms 19 and 1 through 4, you see it there on your screen. Our message this evening or our teaching for this seminar is entitled Eclipsing the Past, Harnessing the Super Moon for Divine Release and Renewal. So, so I want to welcome everyone. Tonight we gather under a celestial alignment that offers profound spiritual significance. A super moon is combined with a partial lunar eclipse. While this is not a full eclipse, it remains a powerful opportunity for reflection and transformation. The supermoon occurs when the moon is closest to the earth in its orbit, appearing larger and brighter than usual. Even though tonight's eclipse is only partial, it still offers us the chance to reflect on the shadows that might be cast over our lives and how we can begin to release them. So tonight, we'll explore two key themes, the theme of release and the theme of embrace, or the theme of letting go and the theme of what I must receive. So tonight, first, we're going to examine what must I release? We're going to look at the fears, doubts, and limiting beliefs that no longer serve us. Then we'll move into what we must embrace, our divine purpose, the light, and its potential. But we must know that source desires to give us more than we are open to receive. And we're going to address that tonight. So we're going to start by looking at the metaphor of the eclipse. But before I go into that, I want to show you. So this is the moon, Earth. And the sun is on the other side of the earth. And so tonight what has happened, with this being a super full moon, the, the light that comes from the sun passes over the earth and our shadow falls onto the moon as a reflector. And so we're going to look at the concept as the moon is our unconsciousness or our unconscious self. And the sun represents our conscious self. And the earth represents us. So this 
visually depicts a metaphoric balance between receiving light and casting shadows. So during tonight's partial eclipse, the earth will cast a shadow on the moon, covering only a small part of its surface. Although the shadow is partial, it still symbolizes the journey of mankind standing between divine light, which is the sun, and the spiritual self, which is the moon. So let's break this down symbolically. The sun represents divine light, which is a source of energy, vitality in our lives. The moon, it symbolizes our spiritual self, our subconscious, our emotions, and the parts of us that reflect the divine light. The earth, which represents us, stands between the sun and the moon, casting a shadow. Even though the eclipse is only partial, it represents the shadows in our lives. That is, we can see the fears, the doubts, the limits, limiting beliefs, those low vibrational activities that are going on in our lives, but not so observable. These are the things that block us from receiving the divine light. Even with a partial eclipse, we're still given the opportunity to reflect on these shadows and begin the process of releasing them. So it's kind of like doing some mirror work tonight. So the moon represents the mirror. And because of the shadow being cast on it, you can what it's reflecting is what's really going on in our lives. So that's the metaphor we're going to work through tonight. So let's start with what must I release? So in this first part of this seminar, we'll focus on the power of release. To truly align with divine vision and purpose, we must first make space by letting go of what no longer serves us. You, sometimes you have to let go to receive. We have a hard time letting go because we're familiar with what we have. Even when what we have doesn't really serve our highest and greatest good. So tonight's partial lunar eclipse symbolizes the shadows that covers part of our lives. The moon during this event, again, receives only part of the earth's shadow. This still represents the hidden aspects of ourselves, our fears, our judgments, our insecurities that we may be reluctant to face. So tonight we bring these shadows to light so we can begin to release them. So right where you are tonight, I'm going to take you into a silent reflect reflection. So where you are, I want you to take a big breath in through your nostrils and hold it. Now release it all the way down. Now take another big breath in through the nostrils. And as you bring the air in, close your eyes. You're in a safe space. Expand your lungs to full capacity. Hold it. Now release it. And as you release it, you're letting go of that which no longer serves you. One more big breath in through the nostril. Eyes closed. Hold it. Allowing every cell, every system, every organ to come into alignment with perfect wholeness, perfect health. Now exhale through your mouth. All the way down. And when you come to the bottom of the breath, I want you to continue to breathe in and out as I take you through this silent reflection. Take a moment to reflect quietly on the following. What emotional or mental shadows are you holding on to? What's getting in the way? Is it anger? Guilt? Fear? Self-doubt, shame. What are the patterns or beliefs 
that are keeping you stuck. Beliefs that no longer serve your highest and greatest good. Beliefs that you've never really looked at, but you hold on to them because they've been passed on to you. So as you reflect, remember this. Remember that this is a space for personal exploration tonight. You don't need to share. Just allow yourself to quietly acknowledge what needs to be released. Breathing in and breathing out. The easy one that comes to mind are things like anger, judgments, unforgiveness, blame, shame, guilt, resentments. For many of us, fear is the big one. What do I mean? Fear of change. Fear of letting go of the past. Who am I if I let that go? Fear of moving on or moving forward. If I leave this space, where do I go? Where do I return to? Fear of doing something different. That's a big one. Fear of letting go of anger. Because if I let go of the anger, then perhaps I can't hold that person accountable no more. Fear of, of letting go of fear itself. Now I must show up and be great. Fear of letting go of your insecurities. We must be willing to see ourselves in a way that is different than how we see ourselves coming into tonight. Our egos want us to remain entrenched in who we think we are, even when it may not really be our authentic selves. Who are we authentically? What does our astrological signs reflect? For many times, they'll tell us who we really are or have the propensity to be. Is this very different? Or is there congruence between perhaps what your zodiac sign says, astrological sign says? So letting God's source show up however he, it wants to in us is important. More than we can ever be on our own. We have this silent partner that we edge out because of our ego selves. So tonight it's about stopping the resistance so that more and more can be revealed. You're not pushing back. You're just present. So the question tonight is what must I release or let go? Now, to do this requires a lot of trust. It is unfolding, and so it's a slow process. This energy that we're in, the full moon energy, it will move for, be present in our lives for the next five to six days. So this is a question you could ponder as you lay your head to the pillow each night this week with a journal by your bed. Continue to breathe in and out and you can open your eyes. One of the biggest obstacles is fear. Fear is often the biggest obstacle to releasing what no longer serves us. Simply fear of change. Fear of letting go of the past. These fears keep us anchored in place, preventing growth. Think about it. Think about it like a storage unit. 
when we hold on to old emotions or past experiences, we are paying a price. I worked for one of the companies where people would purchase units or rent units and they will pack it to the hill and I wouldn't see them for months. So clearly they didn't need the things, but they held on to them because perhaps I'll need it one day. What are you holding on to that's no longer serving you? We keep things we no longer need. But the cost of doing this is high. It takes up space and it blocks us from the receiving of the new thing or the new energy. And sometimes because we are, our storage is full, we're not able to run at peak performance. So this time of the year, this this time of the month where we are experiencing this super moon and we experience full moons every month, sometimes two, it's an opportunity for you to sit in the shadow of the moon and reflect upon what is it that I must release? What must I release? Again, being in a safe space, simply close your eyes and take a big breath in through your nostrils. Hold it. Now exhale through your mouth. Another big breath in. Expanding your lungs to full capacity and at your own rate and pace, release it. Continue to breathe in and out. Breathing is a way of centering yourself, of slowing down, of slowing your thoughts. And it's also a way to release your shadows. So with each Exhale, I want you to experience the weight of something lifting. Big breath in. Exhale. Continue to breathe in. This exercise helps you to symbolically release. Continue to breathe in and out. Paying attention to your breath. It's symbolically releasing those shadows. Continue to sit comfortably with your eyes closed. Breathing in. And as you exhale, I want you to examine the weight of those shadows lifting from you. Some of them will be like feathers and you won't even feel them, but they're leaving. With each exhale, feel yourself letting go of what no longer serves you. You may know something that is transpiring in your life that you need to let go of. You've been feeling like you want to release it. Tonight, you can let it go. Just simply say, I release you. I let it go. Some of you are holding on to excessive weight. It's okay to, don't try to lose it. Just release it. Some of you are in relationships that are entanglements. You don't know how to get out of them. Just release yourself from it. So as you exhale, You release all that holds you back. And I want you to say, as you exhale, I release all that holds me back. I am free and open to receive divine light. As I breathe in, 
I breathe in sources, gods, the universe, greatest and highest good in every domain of my life, my work, my play, my relationships, my finances, my health. You release and you let go. And you repeat, I release and I let go. Everything, anything that no longer serves my highest and greatest good. Those things and experiences that define me or have defined me in the past, but are really holding the space that source or God desires to show up in and through me as me. Breathing in and out. Open your eyes. Now, we want to use some visualization. I want you to visualize tonight's partial lunar eclipse as a mirror. And it brings darkness to the surface for you to confront. So again, as you close your eyes, picture the areas of your life where you feel resistance. What emotions or fears rise up? These are the shadows that are asking to be released tonight. Feel these shadows gently like feathers lifting and dissolving in the universe. Things you've been struggling to let go of by the work of your hands, by the power of your might. Tonight you let them go just by simply releasing them. Now I want you, as you breathe in and out tonight, to affirm with me, I'll state it once, and I would like you to affirm it with me twice. Continuing to breathe in and out at your pace. And here's the affirmation. I am no longer held by the past. I release the weight of fear, anger, and resistance. I am free. So together, I am no longer held by the past. I release the weight of fear, anger, and resistance. I am free. One more time together. I am no longer held by the past. I release the weight of fear, anger, and resistance. I am free. Breathing in and out at your own pace. Open your eyes. Now, we have let it go. We've identified what we must release. Now there's another part of the equation of the law of circulation. What must I embrace? After the release, we embrace the divine light that's always available to us. And notice the person in the image of the earth that now this person has shifted from the moon, which has no light of his own, but only a reflection to the true source of light. So as we move into what I like to call module two or part two of tonight, it's what must I embrace now that we've created space by releasing the shadows we can move into the next phase of tonight, embracing the divine light that is always available to us. 
The sun's light represents a giving and divine purpose. As the moon begins to emerge from the earth's partial shadow, the sun's light shines through again. Tonight, we are called to embrace this light, to step into the fullness of God's vision, source's vision, however you identify with something greater than yourself's vision for your life. And we do that by self-reflection. Now, I want you to take a moment, gently close your eyes, and I want you to reflect on the following as you continue to breathe in and out. What must I become to align with God's vision, source's vision for my life? How must I grow? What new aspects of myself must I be willing to embrace? Breathing in and breathing out. How must I grow? What new aspects of myself must I embrace? What must I be willing to become or be to align with God? Source's vision for my life. It has a lot to do with trusting the universe, trusting God, trusting the divine intelligence, the creator of all things. Even with this partial eclipse tonight, we are reminded to trust in what we cannot see. Just as we trust the moon will eventually emerge from the shadow, we must also trust that God's plan is unfolding even when it's not visible. You're feeling a nudge to be more than that's God's plan, but you still don't know what it is, but you know what it is currently is not what it is that I'm seeking. In Psalms 57 and 2, it reads, I cry out to God most high, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. So we need to trust that God, source, supreme intelligence, purpose is greater than anything you can imagine. For the scriptures say, I know the plans that I have for you. And very few of us have found time to consult with the manufacturer, to know what we are made to do, to know what our why is. Although we look like every other individual, but none of us are the same. We're unique and authentic. And we need to embrace that. So what must you become to align with Source's vision for your life? How must you grow? What new aspects of yourself must you embrace? This is called transformation. Breathing in and breathing out. Let's move into another brief, brief breathing exercise. This time we're going to focus on embracing the divine light. With your eyes closing, safe environment. Big breath in through your nostrils. Inhaling deeply. And as you do, imagine breathing in God's highest good for your life and hold it. And as you hold it, it's correcting that which needs to be corrected. Now exhale. All the way down. Another slow, deep inhale. 
as you're healing what needs to be healed, there's some of you on the call that's dealing with medical issues, that this elixir of life, which is the breath of life, is shifting even right now. Hold it. With gratitude, you release it because you're letting go of anything that this does not represent your highest and greatest good. Now continue to breathe in and out. And with each breath, I want you to feel the expansion in your chest as you welcome the divine potential with each breath. Now I want you to affirm with me. I'm going to state it once and then we're going to affirm it together twice. As I breathe in, I embrace God's sources, greatest and highest good in every domain of my life. Together, as I breathe in, I embrace God's sources, greatest and highest good in every domain of my life. As I breathe in, I embrace God's greatest and highest good in every domain of my life. Gently open your eyes, continue to breathe. We're talking about visualization. Visualizing living in alignment. Let me review some things that some of you may not be familiar with. Visualization usually for most people is about what they want or what is lacking in their lives. Visualization or holding an image is good if it's inclusive of not readily, readily known vision of God for your life. I mean, sometimes we have to just ask, what is your highest and greatest good for me? Visualization is, is limited, however, to what you know, what you've seen already, what you can see, and therefore is only good as what you have experienced. If you haven't seen health, it's difficult to experience that. If you haven't walked in wealth, it's difficult to experience that. If you haven't had a healthy relationship, it's difficult to visualize that. Externally and experientially driven are most of our visions. In visualization, we know what we want. That may not be inclusive of what source or God's purpose in our lives. Because often our visualizations are driven by what we've seen, what we've heard, what we've tasted, what we've experienced that we think represents our highest and greatest good. And it's coming from the outside. There's something more powerful. It's called envisioning. It's an intentional, it being intentionally being open to what source or God's vision is for you. And you don't get that by looking out. You get it by looking in. That's why the scripture tells us to go in and shut the door. Shut the door on what? On all the external stimuli. External stimuli. External stimuli that is lying to you. Shut the door. And for that to happen, we must spend time in meditation and seeking that which is so apparent and easily grasped. For the scripture also tell us that many are the plans of man and the end thereof is destruction. Not that God is destroying you or you have a curse on you, but you run it from pillar to post thinking that the solution is on the outside. The scripture also tell us in Job, upon his bed in a dream, God seals his instructions in man. So we need to rest. We need to trust. We need to receive. 
our wives. Now, visualization. Simply close your eyes. Continue to breathe in and out. Follow your breath. This steals your thoughts. Now visualize yourself standing fully in alignment with source's divine purpose. Feel the radiance. Not only that it comes from the outside, but what begins to illuminate from the inside. What does your life look like when you are aligned with your highest potential? What does it feel like when you are aligned with your highest and greatest good? See yourself walking in divine light. Feel the warmth. Fully embracing your new reality. Now, slowly open your eyes. And I want to tell you again, God is more ready to give each of you more than you are ready to receive. It starts with trusting in your worthiness. It's not based on a performance relationship. God does not expect anything of you other than a relationship. So you got to trust in your worthiness. I know religion, people have told you, put you on the performance track. You like the little rat, not calling nobody a rat, but it's like that little lab rat that's just running, running, running on that circular wheel you must know that you don't have to run for anything for the source is with you in you you are worthy of abundance joy divine purpose you are good enough you're not broken and stop allowing people to pull you into that narrative you're perfect whole and complete just as you are. To embrace this new chapter in your life, you must embrace that. Trust in that worthiness that is not performance-based. It's relational. Just like a baby does not have to do anything to get the mother's love, you as a child of God has to do nothing but receive the word says, source desires to do exceedingly abundantly above anything you can even ask or think. Embrace that. Slowly close your eyes. Follow your breath. As it comes in. As it circulates throughout your entire system. As you release it. I want you to affirm with me. I'm going to affirm it first, and then we'll affirm it together twice. I am worthy of God's greatest gifts. I am open. I open myself to receive divine guidance, love, and abundance in the next six days. I am worthy of God's greatest gifts gifts. I open myself to receive divine guidance, love, and abundance in these next six days. I am worthy of God's greatest gifts. I open myself to receive divine guidance, love, and abundance these next six days. And so it is. Now, gently open your eyes as we bring this to a conclusion. As we come to the close of this time together, I want us to take a moment to reflect on what you've experienced in this short period of time. We've released the shadows that no longer serve us 
Just as the moon has partially received the shadow of the earth, we have embraced the fullness of God's vision, source's vision, the universe's vision for us. Just as the sun continues to give light and purpose, it is continuing to radiate towards us. But is it bouncing off because we can't absorb it? Because we have no room to receive it? Because we don't feel worthy enough? We've released that. Now we stand in perfect alignment, open and ready to step forward. It's about transformation. But there's no transformation if there is no action, no action, no transformation. So over the next three to five days, I want you to take time and reflect on what you've released and what you've embraced. I want you to write down one thing you are committed to releasing, the thing you've been struggling with. And one thing you are committed to embracing. A lot of times the thing you release has the blessings attached to it of that's what you're going to embrace. So over the next few days, continue to reflect on what you've released and what you're embracing. Consider journaling each morning when you rise about what you are committed to releasing and what new energy you are welcoming into your life. Our final affirmation tonight. You see it on the screen. Normally I would ask if you feel like sharing your insights or reflections. You are welcome to do that. We're going to be wrapping up here shortly and going to the green room. And if anybody want to share anything, they can. But remember, this is a space for quiet reflection tonight and journaling in your own time is as equally valuable. So the question is, or the affirmation, and let's say it together. I release all that holds me back. I embrace the fullness of God's vision for my life. I am free. I am aligned. I am ready. And so it is. Thank you for joining us for Transformation Tuesday. The verse shows us the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim, yes, the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech they speak to us night after night they reveal knowledge some of you have to release some beliefs around looking into the skies see the man man can control the narrative of what time it is he could tell you to set your clock back or move it forward and we go along with the program but there's a clock in the sky that rotates through 12 houses that show up on the horizon at designated time. You were born in a house, maybe in the house of Aries or the house of Pisces or the house of Virgo, the house of Leo, Leo, the house of Capricorn. You were born in that particular house and it has an influence on you. Know a little bit more about the house you were born in. The word says, in my in my house, there are many mansions, manses. There are many, there's 12 houses, and we all were born into them. It's important that you understand that the stars are speaking to you. The planets are speaking to you. Just as we know, when the full moon hits, it affects us. Some of us just go back crazy <laughs> when it's the full moon. The police officers don't even like working that shift when it's the full moon. Because the, that pull of the moon impacts people emotionally. People are emotionally unstable and it just pushes them over. So we must pay attention to what's happening 
beyond what we can see. When you look beyond what you can see, when you look into the heavens beyond the atmosphere in which the earth covers, envelops the earth, you're like looking into your subconscious mind. And you see the subconscious mind and you see the thoughts of God. I want you to think about that. So as we close tonight, I hope you found some value. Again, my name is Asar, the melanated mystic. I have many levels to myself. If you found value tonight, part of the law we talked about was releasing. Some of you want to see a stronger flow of cash in your life, but you're holding on to what you have because you don't trust. You're laboring, you're getting another job because you don't trust. But the word tells us labor not for wealth. You don't have to work for wealth. It is God good pleasure to give you an understanding of these keys that if you grab these keys and begin to use these keys, your life will shift. Action. So if this teaching tonight has blessed you in any way, consider being a blessing to this ministry. And you can do it in a number of ways. You see there on the screen, there's a phone number. If you want to sow a seed by way of Cash App or Zelle, the phone number is 708-368-1076. Or perhaps you want to use a debit card, credit card, you can go to oasiseverywhere.com. Don't forget to put the hyphen in there and go over to the giving tab. And then you'll find ways that you can transmute what you have into the ministry. And I appreciate it. So I thank you. I thank you tonight. Circulate, circulate, circulate. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for sowing a seed. Thank you for being present. Thank you for allowing me to show up as my best self. Thank you tonight. I'm going to bring the screen back live. Um, let me um, exit out of the screen and bring it back to, I'm going to stop the share. One second here. Um, da, 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 da. Let me see how I find that. Um, go back to my Zoom. I'm. Da, 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 let me close out the screen and I'll find you. Find you somewhere in here. My, where's my Zoom at? Um, oh, there you go. Awesome. Thanks for sticking around. I'm gonna open up the screen. So, all right, all right. Good evening. I'm glad that many of you have stuck around. Matter of fact, everybody stuck and stayed. Um, it's good to see you, Al. It's good to see you, Mom. It's good to see you, Ariane. Um, Erica, it's good to see you. Um, someone's dialing in by iPhone, and I can't tell who that is. And it's good to have you present. Rachel, it's good to see you. How is Keith doing? I would like to know that tonight. And Cheryl, your presence is welcome, and it's good to see you. So I'm looking here, uh, and I don't see any feedback in, in the um, chat. So if anybody wants to, you got an aha moment, I got a share, um, got a question, you can go ahead and uh, raise your hand. I see there's one hand that just popped up. One second, let me find that. Okay, good, good evening, Rachel. How are you this evening? You have the mic. Uh, you can unmute yourself. Hello, Brother Sar. Yes, yes, how are you doing? Doing well. I'll spend some time with Keith today. He he is uh he's doing he's doing better, lots Excellent. better. He Excellent. is uh, meditating and um he, he's um he's staying positive, he's opening up and uh he's doing some reflection and he's just he's he's coming along. He's had some of uh, um therapy um uh, in Good. place going to be starting as uh prescribed by uh the doctors at the hospital where he was great great and we we our, our affirmation every day is that each day in some way he's getting better and better we stand on that yes. Good. awesome how can i help you this evening it's got a question got a reflection okay when you was uh, talking about when you mentioned visualization with uh that I was glad to be enlightened on that because a lot of times in my meditation and visual 
visualization, it has been um it has been just really externally driven. I'm mm -hmm. I really haven't taken the time to ask source what what is your plan? What what mm -hmm. is your desire for me? Mm -hmm. Went in there with, with my agenda, seeing mm -hmm. and, and seeing what I wanted to see, envision mm -hmm. what I wanted to see. Um, that that's so important um, because we most of us when we think about it most of our prayers um, is externally driven maybe something's going on in our physical body which is the external because we are not our bodies the body is just a container that has senses attached to it to let us know when something's wrong with the container but there's nothing wrong with who we really are and so sometimes we're praying about the container or sometimes we're praying about situations that are outside or things that have happened in the past and we're praying that it won't happen, but we're giving energy to it that it will happen. And so our prayers are externally focused. Our vision is externally focused because we're looking at life through our eyes instead of looking at life through our real eye, that, that spiritual eye. And when you begin to look, so visioning, Visioning should come as a result of what you envision. So when you go inside, even though we spell it E N V vision, you go I inside and you shut the door and you get quiet and you allow source to drop in on you what it is it desires for you. And it desires so much more than we can vision for ourselves. Surrender is my problem. <laughs> sur sur surrender, that's right. And we can't surrender because we don't trust. Yes. But we have to, and that's a whole nother um, topic we have to drill into. What does surrender really look like? Why do we have a difficult time surrendering? Um, it's trust. And it's just like it may not, you don't surrender to a person because you don't trust their judgment. Sometimes we don't surrender to God because we think God is out to get us because we've been taught, we've been ingrained with incorrect teachings that we see God in a light that doesn't even reflect who it really is. So that's important. Wow. Thanks for sharing that. Anything else? That's good. I'm good. Thank you. Awesome. Um, Ariane um, says, this was amazing. Thank you for this in-depth prayer and clarity about the energy right now. This is everything I've been looking for to help harness the energy of these moons. Yes, yes. Now, there's um, we're in a side of a cycle, um, and this cycle has been going on for 18 years, and it's coming to a close, and we'll never see it again. Um, uh, none of us who are alive, um, any one of our generations to come, it'll be a long time before this cycle comes back around. Uh, we're truly moving out of the, the Piscean age. We're moving out of the age that was known as the church age. We're moving out of the age where there were secret societies. Everything is being laid open. We're able now to see the things that we thought was sacred was really secular. And the thing that we thought was secular is really sacred. So we have to be ready to um, deal with the cognitive dissonance that's going to come with, I know something that should erase, that will erase, that now erases all that I thought I know. And that's a difficult place to be. When you hold what you hold as sacred and you find out that it's really sacrilegious. But that's the work each of you have to do. I'm not here to tell you what to let go or what to take on. All I'm here to do is expose to you that there's a better way. Ask yourself, how is the way that I've been going working for me? And if it's not working for you, you want something different, you got to do something different. Awesome. So it looks like uh, I don't see any other comments here. Uh, I'm going to wrap this up. Anybody else got anything you want to share? Uh, go ahead and raise your hand, uh, make a comment. I appreciate it. Other than that, we're going to call it a close. Now, everyone who is on this call, I should be, you sh I should have your um, email address. I'm the only one I won't be able to give this, the assignment to, or I have some supplementary things you can listen to. Uh, the iPhone person, 
if you want it, you can call, you can call me at 708-368-1076, or you can text me at 708-368-1076 with your email address. That way I'll make sure you get it. Uh, I want to make sure that all the individuals who are on this call tonight get this supplemental information. Okay. I just kind of wet your whistle tonight. So you guys have a wonderful day. Know that something greater is on the horizon. Know that source desires to do exceedingly abundantly above anything you can ask or think. And it's not about a performance. It's only about alignment and being in relationship. <laughs>